Welcome to the Great Lakes Fishing Podcast presented by Fishhawk Electronics. If you're looking for news, tips, and stories about fishing the Great Lakes, you've come to the right place. And now your host, Chris Larson. Welcome to the Great Lakes Fishing Podcast. Our guest today is Captain Troy Creasy from High Adventure Sport Fishing. Troy, thanks for joining the show. Hey, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, it's great to have you on. We really kind of, we've got a lot of different things that you do, so we want to get into kind of a little bit of everything. This is going to be a little bit of a variety show, but uh, you guys are located on the eastern basin of Lake Ontario. You were just out with the charter group this morning. Tell us about uh, your trip that you had out today. Uh, it is uh, late June, June 23rd. We're recording this. This is going to publish on the 25th. What was fishing like out on the water for you today? Well, we had a really nice day. Uh, we started kind of slow. It didn't seem like our, our program was quite working, but we switched some things up and uh, we were targeting brown trout and we ended up with a real nice catch of browns. We had a, a big uh, domestic rainbow mixed in and uh, I had a family that fishes with me every year about this time and, uh, and they were very happy. That's good to hear. So this time of year on the East End, you're kind of going after the Browns. Tell us a little bit about how that Eastern end of the lake sets up throughout the year. Well, well, traditionally, yeah, June is, is a brown trout month for, for us here in the Eastern Basin. Uh, the last couple of years, you know, we've had a lot of Chinooks uh, in our area. They just, you know, it was kind of a bonus, you know, you tend to get spoiled a little bit. I mean, we, we barely targeted targeted brown trout uh, last June because, you know, the, the kings were right here. But now it seems like we're kind of back to normal. We had some crazy winds that we had uh, some kings here earlier in the, in the month and in late May, but uh, it kind of scattered them. And so fortunately, you know, we have our brown trout. Um, they kind of, of course, follow the bait, but they're, you know, they're also uh, temperature sensitive as well. We, uh, we generally look for that 52, 53 degree mark where it hits bottom uh, and we fish above it. The last couple of days, that's been like 35, 40 feet of water. So the, the cold water has been pretty high lately. And that's another reason why we've had a hard time targeting Chinooks because there's just so much cold water around. But uh, the browns are there and, uh, and so that's what we're after. Brown trout don't really mind warm water. You know, the mistake some people make, and I've been I've been known to do it, is to fish underneath them. You know, they you can catch browns in 68 degree water all day long. They just like to have cooler water underneath, but they have no problem coming up into that warmer column to feed, and then they'll kind of hang out there, or they'll just they'll just go back down. So our surface temperature was 70. I mean, we even saw some browns chasing bait on the surface, but when it gets that warm, you know, I have a hard time catching them right on the surface. But 10, 12 feet down early, you know, 15, 20 feet down later. And then the last couple of fish did come, you know, right off the bottom. The sun was high, you know, so they tend to move down. But, uh, but yeah, so you just kind of set up your pattern. And, and, and honestly, you, you know, in that shallow of water, you have to cover everything from top to bottom. Yeah, how are you, how are you uh, targeting the whole water column there? Um, mainly with spoons, uh, you know, I get away from the stick baits once they move out of that super shallow water, like, you know, earlier in the spring, um, you know, we're fishing downriggers, of course, we're fishing wire divers, we're fishing slide divers and, and a variety of lead cores and uh, short coppers, uh, today, like a, like a 100 copper, which, you know, prox giving you approximately 20 feet of depth, uh, three, four and five color lead core. And, uh, and real short wire divers, like, like on a three and a half setting, but only out like 40 feet. So you might be getting, you know, you might be getting 15 to 20 feet of depth there. When do you guys expect that you'll have your kings in and how do you go about chasing kings on your end of the lake? Well, there was a tournament last weekend. It was the uh, Atomic Challenge. It's like a kind of a small local tournament run by uh, Tom Allen from Atomic Trolling Flies. And, uh, and we had 45 uh, uh, teams in the tournament, and a couple of them did make a long run up north into the shipping lanes, and they found Chinooks up there. And then there was a few kings caught, you know, out in like the four or five, 600 foot range. But, you know, right now we just, we probably just need a, a, another west blow to bring some warm water across and down and like get, you know, get a thermal climb in that, 
60, 70 foot range. So you can kind of eliminate that upper, upper column. And, uh, and, and I think those Chinooks will be back. I don't, I don't think they're that far away. What does your King program look like, Troy? How are you going after them? What's your favorite way to target them? This time of year, first thing in the spring, and, you know, and I'll back up a little bit. Like when I started in May, you know, we got opened up. It was like the third week of May till they opened us up with the COVID and everything. And we, we did have Kings around, and it's basically a spoon program early in the year. You're covering a lot of water. You're, you know, you're zipping along pretty good. Again, you got things spread out. You may catch a king in 39 degree water and you catch the next one in 59 degree water. But then as they start to, to, I don't want to say stage, but as they just start to school up a little more and basically get into this late June, July pattern, uh, then, then we'll switch over and it'll be more trolling flies and it'll be a lot of, uh, of, you know, cut bait, uh, you know, owl wives, we use local bait, you can use herring or some of the commercial baits, but that's when we're using flashers and, and meat. And that, that definitely will take over. It'll, you know, it'll be, we start out with, you know, 95% spoon bite. And by the middle of July, it'll probably be a, you know, a, a 60, 70% meat bite. So. Yeah. When people think about uh, fishing Lake Ontario, at least in New York, they think about the Salmon River. What is that return like? What is the fall fishing like as uh, you start getting those stagers in? I'm probably, they call it the Salmon Re River for a reason. Uh, what is that like? Yeah, well, that, the Salmon River, of course, is where the hatchery is located. So it gets the, the largest return of, of, uh, of Chinook, uh, not just probably in Lake Ontario, but probably in any tributary in the Great Lakes. You know, I mean, the hatchery is right there. It gets a tremendous run of fish um you might know or maybe some of the listeners would know that uh, new york state has been reducing the the stocking over the last few years you know our our bait fish may be in a little bit of uh, of uh trouble due to some real cold winters but the, the state's taken a you know conservative uh uh, you know, act here. And, and so they've reduced our Chinook stocking, but the Salmon River will always get a great run of fish because they don't cut that particular river because, or they don't cut it much because they have to get them back there to, uh, you know, to take the eggs in the fall. But I mean, it's, it, it's craziness, you know, for lack of a better word, I, I've done it pretty much my entire life and, and I'm getting old. So, um, you know, it, it's craziness because, you know, you have tens of thousands of people coming for a good time. Um, you know, it's, it's a great run. If, I mean, just, you know, you know I, I get done at the end of the day and I may go sit at one of the restaurants that overlook the river and just watch the fish go up and, and watch the craziness. You know, it's, it's just, if you haven't seen it, it's, you know, you picture, you know, 15 to 30 pound fish just, just blowing up stream, you know, over the rocks, through the rapids. And, and, you know, at times it's nonstop. I mean, a major run official, you know, can start and, and last, you know, two days. So it, it's something to see. What is the fishing like on the river? We've been talking a lot of fishing out on the lake, but uh, what is the fishing like on the river? How and when do you target the fish there? Um, I start, I finish the lake early just because um, I live right here by the river. I have so many clients that like the early uh, river season. You know, I, I start just after Labor Day. I start about the 10th of September. And honestly, like the last two years, we've had good numbers of early fish. You go down to the river, the crowds really haven't shown up yet. It's, it's possible to get into a bunch of fish with, with very few people around. The other hand, the other side of that is, I can go back four or five years when we didn't have early fish and you go down there and you see absolutely nothing maybe for those first couple of weeks because, or days, I should say, because they're migratory, you know. Uh, but if you can get into the early fish, they're bright silver and there's less people. As we get into late September, you know, there's still fresh fish. They're coming in every day, but, but so are the people. So, you know, you fight for a spot, you know, you, uh, you know, you get fish that get tangled with other anglers and of course you lose them or they lose their fish. So, you know, it can be, it, it's still a good time. Everybody's up for a good time, but it, but it can be touchy and in certain areas of the river are, are prone to overcrowding and I just kind of avoid them. Um, I try to get into the out of the way places when I can find it. Um, I do a lot of, of fly fishing for them. And then if I'm in my drift boat, I also do a lot of uh, back trolling with, uh, with plugs like flatfish. And there we're just trying to, you know, people will tell you that the Chinooks don't bite when they come in the river. Well, they don't feed, but they will still, you know, st 
strike out of aggression. So we use high action lures. We back them down to the tail of the holes and, and we catch plenty of them that way. Uh, another thing you do, Troy, you are migratory as well. You uh, fly south to Florida. Tell us a little bit about that Florida backwater fishing you're doing. Yeah, man, I, I, I do. I, uh, I chase steelhead again pretty much my entire life, and, and the winters get cold here, you know. And uh, so in mid-December, I uh, stop uh, steelhead fishing for a few months, and my wife and I, uh, we head south. I, I set up my business eight years ago in a little place called Pine Island, which is uh, like two hours south of Tampa. It's uh, near Fort Myers, Captiva, Sanibel. And I fish the backwaters. I, I don't go out and I tell people I get beat up all summer on that lake when the wind blows. So I just do the backwater. Uh, we target snook and reds and sea trout and some juvenile tarpon and mackerel, snapper, sheep's head. So it's all kind of backwater fishing with either uh, shrimp or uh, white bait or, you know, we do a lot of artificials as well. And how does that fishing, how does that compare to what you're doing in and around Lake Ontario? You know, it's, it's a little, it is different. I mean, it, it more relates to like bass and walleye fishing, which I, I've done that a lot up here as, as well over the years. You know, you're doing a lot of jigging, you're casting. So, you know, on Lake Ontario, it's primarily trolling. Uh, on the Salmon River, um, I do a lot of either fly fishing or float fishing. And so down there, you know, I mean, I guess, I guess the, the way it would relate the most is, you know, the people have the rod in their hands and they're casting, you know, on the, on the lake, you know, it's up to me to put them over the fish and, and they fight them and bring them in on the river. They have to kind of do it themselves. And the same in Florida, you know, if I, I tell them it's, you know, it's got to be within a couple feet of that or inches of that dock or those mangroves or that pothole. It's, you know, it's up to them to, to put it in that spot. And, uh, and so it's more of a hands-on thing than, than the lake might be. Are there lessons learned there that you can relate and bring back to one or the other? Just a different variety. I mean, snook have done to me what steelhead did to me 35 years ago. You know, they're a tremendous fish. They're like a cross between a steelhead and a largemouth bass. So, um, you know, some, but the tactics that we use, I mean, again, down there, it's a lot of live bait. And, and up here, we either use artificials or dead bait. So, I mean, in, in that respect, there, there's not a lot of, you know, um, you know, but, uh, but it just, it's another great fishery that I really enjoy during the winter months. Yeah. Very cool. You talked about it earlier, uh, COVID and, and opening things up. Can you tell us a little bit about COVID and, and how it's affected your business this year and kind of what you guys are doing to be able to overcome some of those setbacks? Well, all, all guides and captains in, uh, in New York and, you know, well, other states as well, uh, you know, we got shut down. Um, I, you know, I lost my entire spring river season. I generally come back from Florida and I start fishing steelhead April 1st and uh, we, we couldn't work. So I actually stayed in Florida longer where we weren't shut down and I was able to pick up a few trips down there. But, you know, again, um, you know, everything was, Florida wasn't shut down for guiding, but obviously nobody was flying. So the people weren't coming down there, but I had a few local people. And then I came back up here in early May and I got the, the lake boat in the water. And uh, fortunately we got opened back up. I, I don't remember the exact date. I think it was May 17th or something like that. We, we got opened back up to work, but so you had two things. You had one, you had a lot of people that were still, cautious or scared to travel and come fishing and then other people that have been out of work so long now can't afford to do their charter so all of us have had a, a lot of cancellations uh, we were able to fill you know a lot of them in I'm still getting cancellations I get a call you know just yesterday longtime clients but they're in their 70s they're in Massachusetts they don't really want to travel five hours stay in a hotel two days you know so you know, you really can't blame them. You know, there's, there's a lot of fear out there, but, but we, we're sanitizing the boat. We wipe everything down. Uh, if the people are comfortable with masks, you know, we'll certainly wear them. If they're okay, well, then we just don't. And, uh, you know, we're out in the fresh air. I mean, honestly, what can be better than that? Troy, it's good talking to you. I just kind of wanted to get an overview of what you're doing and what your program is. You guys, uh, you do a lot of different things. So I'd, I'd like to have you back on again sometime to, to talk about probably about that river fishing. I mean, that's something uh, 
That sounds super interesting, but just wanted to get you on and kind of see, get the lay of the land of uh, the eastern side of Lake Ontario and all the other things you're doing. Really appreciate you coming on. Is there something you wanted to talk about today that I haven't asked you about? No, I appreciate you having me on and uh, talking about my business. I, I'm I'm very fortunate to to do what I do, you know, in spite of obstacles that come with any business. And uh, you know, we're blessed with a tremendous fishery here. You know, you hear some of the, uh, you know, the uh, the negatives. You know, like I mentioned, the stocking cuts and stuff. But you have to be proactive. And and I think the states, you know, kind of making the right move and doing something. Uh, about it so you know all the fishery cycle i mean we've been we've been blessed with some banner years and uh, we may see a downswing in the next few years with that with that stocking cut but you still have an opportunity for a 30 pound chinook you still have an opportunity for a 15 20 pound brown trout you know so it, you know it's still a great fishery and i i encourage people to uh to, to get outside and enjoy what we have captain troy creasy from high adventure sport fishing People want to find out more about you or what you're up to. How do they find you? They can find me, you know, social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, High Adventure Sport Fishing, uh, or my personal accounts, uh, Troy Creasy. I generally keep both of them updated uh, on the web, uh, www.highadventurefishing.com. And uh, that's pretty much me. Awesome. Thanks very much, Captain. Good luck out there the rest of the year. And, uh, Hopefully that you guys can keep on those fish and have an awesome year. Okay, it was great to talk to you. You take care as well. Thanks for listening to the Great Lakes Fishing Podcast presented by Fishhawk Electronics. For more information on fishing the Great Lakes, visit our blog at fishhawkelectronics.com.